explain the process of moving from EIGRP to an EBGP slash OSPF design in an enterprise network and how best to leverage the two? That is a huge question, uh, honestly. So, I mean, I think we should, we got to break this down into, into chunks a little bit. One would be the process of migration, uh, migrating from one major routing domain and topology to, to a completely separate one. How do you, how do you move to that? How do you actually do that in enterprise network? Uh, as our part one. So why don't we consider that and uh, and then kind of go from there. And there's no size that is given here in this. Um, I'm assuming this is a fairly large environment though, because if the migration is going from EIGRP, which does scale very large to a combined EBGP OSPF, I'm assuming there's a need there for EBGP where you're breaking up the enterprise network into chunks, maybe separated with EBGP at the edge and then OSPF internally. I'm assuming that's what that sound like what the design would be to you guys, is that what you're inferring from this description? Roughly, okay, I see nodding of heads, okay. So, uh, all right, uh, Pete, I'm gonna start with you. I'm, I'm picking on you because I know you got um, just a, a, a ton of design background and maybe have seen this thing before or something similar. Yeah, I mean, the the most important thing to do uh, for a project like this is to make sure you have plenty of tissues and alcohol, because uh, <laughs> there will be tears and pain. Um, but more realistically is to either find one or two places, like connections to remote offices or something like that, you can treat as demarcations uh -huh. and kind of cut right there and make that your OSPF or EBGP boundary and then do mutual redistribution. Um, this is gonna be awful. You're gonna create routing loops. You're gonna get your filtering wrong, um, kind of no matter how much you test it. The other option here, uh, if you wanna be a little bit more daring, uh, is you can leverage, especially if we're talking EIGRP and OSPF, you can leverage administrative distance and then just deploy OSPF everywhere on top. And so I have both EIGRP and OSPF peering and exchanging routes but only the EIGRP routes are going in because of administrative distance. And then I can start to selectively pull off little pieces of the network where I turn down EIGRP and it's only running OSPF within that little, that little pod or that little section. Um, but this is, this is like as hard as it gets. Yeah. I, who, who else was nodding here? Uh, Kurt, I, I saw you nodding and raising your eyebrows. Do you, is, is there more horror, horror that you wish to share? Well, first of all, I've never run an EIGRP network outside of study material. Um, but there's a reason why this is a key part of studying for your CCIE and they try and trip you up every five minutes with a thousand questions, right? Um, I think sort of Pete's description of sort of like uh, overlays is probably the way I've done that in the past and then like well by overlays I mean two protocols and then switch the administrative distance um, but yeah it's like there be dragons um, the plus side is 60,000 odd CCIE candidates have all blogged about how to you know solve this problem or yeah. how best to attempt it so there's no shortage of war stories yeah, I mean, I, I'll follow up with what Pete said Where, with two, two major points. One is break this into as small a chunks as possible. In other words, you don't want to be, don't, you're not rocking up into the data center in the middle of the night and then flipping the switch on all this and it's just going to work. You know, that that's not really what you want to do. You want to do this in segments. It's going to be a process. That means you need to define uh, some specific area you're going to take, and this is the chunk that we're converting. And then at the edge of that, you're doing that redistribution because you've got the legacy domain, that you've still got uh, with all of your routing information in it that needs to get into that noodle vein and vice versa. You've got to figure out in your lab a mutual redistribution scenario that works for you. If you have a good IP addressing scheme, that's a whole lot easier. If you've got a random willy-nilly IP addressing scheme with what, <laughs> whatever happened to you over the years, getting your access list right so you do your filtering in between each uh, mutual redistribution point is just awful and as pete said you're going to cause loops that's that's happening it's just a thing that's going to happen and you're going to have to be prepared for it you might be able to control the routing loop and have it be somewhat limited but you'll end up with this constant convergence reconvergence 
event that, that happens periodically unless you really put the time in at, the, at those edges to get that redistribution scheme correct. Um, however, if you really get comfortable with it, knowing what it looks like, once you've done a few of these uh, site conversions as you're rolling this thing out over some period of time, it should get easier as you go along. But um, just to follow on what Kurt said, there's a lot of people that have written about this. Spend time reading, learning from their mistakes, make your own mistakes in the lab, blow that lab up hard, and then understand why what happened happened. And if you understand those failures well, when you start doing it in the production environment, hopefully you'll prevent the failures. But then if it does go sideways on you, you're starting to see weird things happen. You'll be like, oh, right, we saw this in the lab and it was because of whatever the thing is that you forgot to do. Uh, and then also just one more punctuation mark, administrative distance is your friend here. Uh, and don't and forget, you, you can say, screw do it in administrative a part of the distance. Yeah. What was that, Kurt? I can say, do it in a part of the network that you can afford to lose. Um, I'm not saying pick on a remote office you don't like, but you know there are certainly parts of the network that are a lot safer to uh, to have drop off versus the entire data center. Um, and you are saying build pick up on risk if you don't like. <laughs> that, that's really what you're saying. Oh, well, let me ask you, Ethan, a question that pops up in my head. Does, is ERGRP one of those protocols that tends to um, give you a little bit of a safety net? Does it take care of some things for you that you have to do more explicitly in the other protocols? Like, is it is it easier to use? Is that why some people adopt it? Um, those are the things I'd be worried about, right? Uh, one protocol masking a problem you don't know you have. So you you design your new one and you don't realize that the old one's actually taking care of a little bit of a design issue. Uh, I mean, I've, I've done some EIJP networks with 2000 plus routers in it. Okay. And the, the, the issue there to get that to scale well is uh, really using stub areas and good route summarization really helps. Both of those things make a, make a huge difference. Um, the mm -hmm. big trick with EIGRP is where you get routes stuck and active where you haven't limited your query domain. And so you, a route drops out and you end up with this router asking a router asking a router because everybody knew about everything because you never summarize routes anywhere. Um, and you never had any stub routers sitting out at the edge of your network um, making EIGRP think that every router in the whole domain knows about every route that's out there. If you have a good design, then... Uh, you're not really masking any problem because you've thought it through, uh, designing stuff well. On the other hand, flipping from EIGRP, which is not hierarchically structured like OSPF is with areas or like ERGRP can be with um, uh, external uh, domains that have to talk to one another, then or external areas that need to talk to one another, it's just a different way of thinking. And so you may not be able to map your routing topology from EIGRP at large scale exactly onto EBGP and OSPF combo, where you really got to rethink where your boundaries are and who you're announcing routes to on either side. It can get complicated because EIGRP, I almost want to say it's more flexible in a way, but if you've designed it well, um, it's, it's less flexible. So I don't know, that's a, that's a long, non-committal answer, Tommy, but anyway.